Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ. We welcome you to this online worship service for St. James. We're glad you chose to worship with us on this fourth Sunday of Easter. Some announcements as we gather in worship today. This Wednesday, we will be uh, inviting you to another parking lot picnic. If the weather's nice, uh, you may want to bring a blanket and sit on the lawn in front of the church. Uh, but it's a time for us to be uh, in one another's company as we share some food with our families. You can bring your own food, or if you would like, uh, Greater Good is uh, working with us this week to provide some uh, meals to be delivered. You can go on our website and order. We need you to place those orders by Monday evening so that we can get a good count to greater good of what meals we need to have delivered on Wednesday. There's an order form on our website if you would like to place one of those orders. We are also uh, in the midst of our carnation sales for Mother's Day and Father's Day. These are virtual carnation sales. They help support uh, the Mission Orphanage in Costa Rica. For several years, we have partnered with them, usually been able to send mission teams down there. We're not able to send a mission team this year, but they are obviously in a need of support. If you would like to purchase carnations in honor or memory of someone, you can go to our website, you can place Mother's Day, you can go ahead and place Father's Day orders if you would like to do that. Vacation Bible School is set for the end of June. We uh, have children who have signed up and want to be a part of this ministry. We are in need of some adult volunteers to help. If you would like to help or if you would like to know just how you might help, uh, contact Meredith or Anna Kate, and they can tell you more about what protocols we have in place, how we plan to carry out Vacation Bible School, and ways that you might be able to make that ministry possible. 
Thank you for your generous support of St. James and these and many other ministries. We appreciate your prayers and we appreciate your financial gifts. If you're worshiping with us today and would like to contribute to these ministries, you can give online or you can always mail a check to our church office. As we continue to worship together, let us go to God in prayer. O oh God, like a shepherd, you have promised to care and lead us. Help us to hear your voice and to follow your direction so that we might enjoy the green pastures and the still waters that you provide for us. And in times of distress, in times of doubt, may we still learn to trust in your voice and your presence with us. In this time of worship, help us to be still and focus on the words you speak to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. shepherd is whose goodness faileth never I nothing lack if I am his and he is mine streams of living water flow my ransomed soul he leadeth and where the verdant pastures grow with food celestial and foolish oft I strayed but yet in love he sought me and on his shoulder gently laid and home rejoicing to believe that it's already the fourth Sunday of Easter. Seems like just yesterday that we were talking about Lent. I do love this time of year though. All of the flowers and little animals. Speaking of animals, do you know what these animals are? Yeah, they're sheep. I see a few of them here. Sheep are really cool animals. I bet you know what sound they make. Bah. <laughs> You probably also know that they're in nurseries a lot, peaceful places, and that they have white wool on them. But I bet there's also a lot that you might not know about sheep. Did you know that sheep make friends with each other? They can remember who other sheep are. And they have feelings too. 
They build friendships, stick up for one another in fights, and feel sad when their friends go missing. Did you know that when a sheep gets turned over on its back, it can't turn back over? It's stuck there until it can get some help. Sheep are really gentle, and they really don't have any way to protect themselves from predators like wolves. The one thing that they can do, though, is pretend that they aren't hurting when they really are. This allows them to stay safer from predators because they don't look weak. Other than that, sheep can be pretty easily gobbled up. They sometimes even wander off and get lost from the group. For those reasons, sheep really need someone to watch out for them, which is why sheep are often cared for by a shepherd. There are good shepherds and there are bad shepherds. The bad ones really only care about the sheep because of what the sheep can get for them. But sheep mean more than that, don't they? Sheep have feelings and need someone who knows them and can help them get right when they are turned all around. A good shepherd knows the sheep, which ones tend to wander off, which ones need extra help getting up a hill. A good shepherd really cares about the sheep. When I think about it, we have a lot in common with sheep. We make friends, don't we? We have feelings, right? Sometimes when we get turned around, we need someone to help us get right side up. And we can get lost and need a way back home. Well, in our scripture reading for today, we learn that we have a shepherd, just like sheep do. Our shepherd is Jesus. Jesus is the good shepherd. He knows each of us by name. If we follow him, we'll find ourselves in the right place. When we get lost, Jesus will come find us and lead us back. There's so many ways that Jesus protects us. And if we let him lead us, we'll find ourselves in a beautiful, perfect green pasture with everything we could ever want. All we need to do is follow. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, our good shepherd. Help us to remember to follow where he leads today and always. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer this day, if we can be in prayer for you or those you love, you can click the link to have some time of prayer with someone right now, or you can call the church office so that one of the pastors can be in prayer with you. Today we lift up Ann Barron, Sandra Bottoms, Virgery Cunningham, Larry Stallings, Tink Trexler, and Ann Wadley. Let us pray. Holy and living God, shepherd of your people, we gather this day to pray, to worship, to offer you our hearts and souls. We know you are good. And so we lift up the prayers of this place. We pray for the church in every place. Gather us together and make us one. One in ministry and mission to the world so that there will be one flock one shepherd. We pray for the nations of the world. Anoint all leaders with your wisdom so that they will use their power to help the poor and defend the vulnerable. We pray for this community. Strengthen those who work each day to heal the sick, to welcome the outcast, to help our siblings in need. We pray for our friends and loved ones. Comfort all those who are suffering. Walk with them through the darkest valleys. Restore them, body, mind, and soul. Loving God, by the power of your spirit, help us to, to keep your commandments and to love one another with the love of Jesus, to be a people who resist evil oppression, and injustice in all of the places we find it. Holy One, let us love as your Son loved. 
We gather all of these prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your heart. is from the book of John. John chapter 10 verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it back up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it back up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of God from the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I will bring them in, and they will listen to my voice. This whole 10th chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus talks about being the Good Shepherd. And several times in the chapter, he talks about the importance of hearing his voice. Here, he says to his disciples, I have other sheep, sheep that are not of this group, of this fold. I'll bring them in also, and they will listen to my voice. 
there's a lot of talk today about who's in and, and who's out. It, it's a talk in our society. It's, it's a talk in the life of the church. Sometimes we get into great disputes about who's in or who's out. I think these words from the lips of Jesus remind us that, that we don't really get to say that. He's the one who will gather the sheep. The one thing we know is that the sheep are to be defined by hearing his voice. Now I want you to hear that first of all as a promise because like me, there's probably times in your life where you're wondering, is God speaking? How can I hear God? Part of what Jesus is reminding us here is that he will speak to us. Indeed, part of the whole witness of Scripture is that the God that we worship is a God who loves to speak. From the very beginning of the Bible, in Genesis chapter 1, God speaks creation into being. At times in the life of the people of faith, God sends prophets that are to speak his words. And then as we read in the New Testament, in the fullness of time, God chose to come and live and dwell among us in human flesh. And when John describes that in the beginning of his gospel, he says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We should take comfort in knowing that God will speak to us. The question is, are we listening? And maybe if I can be just a little more personal, how are we listening? In our branch of the church, in the Methodist church, we have for years said there are some special ways that God has promised to meet us when we are seeking God's direction in our life. John Wesley called them means of grace. And he said when we are trying to discern how God is speaking to us, we should use as many of these means as possible and through them discern the voice of Jesus speaking to us. Indeed, going back to John chapter 10, Jesus talks about knowing his sheep by name, being able to call us by name. There are certainly the obvious things that come to our mind, uh, being in worship together, prayer, scripture reading. But part of what I'm asking you today is, are those just moments for a few minutes on Sunday? Or are those moments that are part of our daily living? I'm reminded again and again how in the Old Testament, the prophets, those who were gifted to speak God's words to the people, often compared our relationship to God to a marriage. And I think about if, if my wife and I only spent time once a week intentionally listening to each other, how difficult that would be. We communicate on a daily basis. Even when we are in different parts of the world, we usually communicate on a daily basis. So how important it is for us who desire to be in a relationship with God, who desire to let the voice of Jesus direct our path each and every day to spend some intentional time each day listening to that voice, using scripture, as part of our meditation, our time of 
opening our hearts and minds to hear how God is speaking to us. Time in prayer. And I think it's important in prayer to lift up our joys and concerns and to intercede for the world. And that is something that is desperately needed today in our country and around the world. But it's also important to have intentional time of silence. To really let God speak to the depths of our heart. Again, part of what we believe is there's no one single way that is the way to hear the voice of Jesus. It's using as many ways as possible. One of the marks of our church is we love to talk about conferences, from a local church conference to an annual conference to the general conference of the United Methodist Church. The historical roots of that was the belief that in conferring together, God's Spirit works in and through that process in ways that we don't often experience. God speaking to us. What Wesley meant when he talked about Christian conferencing was sitting with some close, trusted friends and letting them sometimes be the voice of Christ in our lives. Listening to the voice of our shepherd. Why am I stressing this so vehemently? Why am I saying that it's something that needs to be not just on Sunday morning, but a pattern throughout our days? Because there are so many voices that are trying to claim our attention and trying to direct our lives. It is important for us as disciples of Jesus Christ to listen first to his voice and let his voice be the deciding voice in our lives. It is a voice that the world is longing to hear. We are living in a world that has such divisions and anxiety and just outrage at the moment. And too often within the life of the church, within the life of the believer, we just mirror or echo the voice of the world. The world should hear something different from us. Something that is not the division of the Republican or the Democratic voice the progressive or the conservative voice, the American or the European voice. They should hear how the voice of Jesus Christ has taken root in our life and it begins to echo forth into the world. I know my sheep by name, and they recognize my voice. I have other sheep that are not of this fold. They will listen to me. How are you listening to that voice today? Today we celebrate the life of another child taken into the body of Christ through baptism. And as part of our covenant in baptism, we say we will help nurture that child in the life of faith. Part of what we are saying is we will help that child and help those parents learn ways in their life to listen to the voice of our shepherd. 
But we can only do that if we are listening ourselves. May the grace of Jesus Christ bring peace to your heart and mind so that you can hear his voice to you this day. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. I present for baptism Walker Lee Toll. Thank you. And uh, Walker represents three generations of tolls baptized as part of St. James. So we are glad to be a part of this celebration today. To all of you, I ask on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. I do. I do. Ansley and David, will you nurture Walker in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and lead a Christian life. If so, say, I will. I, I will. will. Do you also reaffirm your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. We, we do. do. It is our prayer that you will continue to nurture Walker in the Christian faith and life, and include Walker in the care of the church. We pray that by God's help, he will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We, as your church family, will surround you with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his service to others. We will pray for Walker that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. I mentioned that Grandfather David was baptized as a part of St. James. Father David was baptized as a part of St. James. Brother Brooks was baptized as a part of St. James. This water that we use uh, has water that comes from Atlanta, but it also has water that comes from the Jordan River, where we remember the baptism of Jesus. And we are excited to incorporate Walker into this community of faith. Let us pray. Almighty God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in his baptism of death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water 
and walker who receives it, to wash away his sin and clothe him in your righteousness throughout his life, that dying and being raised with Christ, walker may share in Christ's final victory. Amen. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'd like to invite the family to lay hands on Walker as we pray for Walker. Almighty God, pour out your spirit upon Walker, that he might know that he has been claimed as your own child, as surely as Jesus heard when he came out of the Jordan, you are my son, the beloved. May Walker know that he lives in the light of your love for him all of his days. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you all for being with us today and being a part of this service and also for representing our larger Christian congregation. Uh, for those of you at St. James, you still have a commitment to continue to nurture Walker, to help his parents uh, surround him with Christian love, to nurture him in the faith so that Walker too may be a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Now, as you go forth, may the voice of Jesus Christ direct your steps in the world. May the love of God flow through you. And may the strength of God's own spirit be with you each step of the way, now and forevermore. Amen.